Hello, Aaron Daly here with another daily vlog, January 7th, 2022. I am currently uploading a video that I finally pieced together today from when I went to, where's the note, there it is, um, from when I went to Wairika to pick up my stuff from UPS because I absolutely had to, which is a strenuous journey to say the least. Um, so it's uploading on my phone, so I figured I'd give the camera on this tablet a try. I got the regular Amazon Fire HD 10. Uh, it's alright. The reason it's only $150. Uh, and it really sucks that... Well, it doesn't really suck. You just you gotta go through some effort if you want to be able to use Google and Google Play and Chrome and all that. Because um, they're really trying to make you use Amazon stuff, which would be fine if it didn't, you know, more for the fact that it wasn't Google. <laughs> it's like, why is Amazon even trying to, I, uh, I can't help itself, I suppose. I don't understand why they don't just acquire, why doesn't Amazon just buy Google, or why Google doesn't buy it all, but, hey, do you want that to happen? <laughs> no, not really. Um, but then again, I mean, maybe I do, I don't know, maybe it'd be great. <laughs> Shoot, this thing's all... This isn't going to look right, I have a feeling. That's alright, because the thing I have can fix it. Anyway, so... Um, cool day. Uh, rainy day. Very rainy. Uh, there's been patchy sun. Like that. Throughout the day, um, but that's been all. A um, lot of mushrooms popping up uh, this time of year because of the way it's been so wet, and it's been. Um, Try really hard to remember to look at the camera. Uh, <laughs> it's been really wet um, and then cold, but then kind of warm. It's been really good mushroom growing conditions, and there's been all kinds of stuff popping up up there. So I want to. There's all these apps for like identifying mushrooms and also um, the Google Lens thing. So I want to play around with that some more. Um, I should. Dude, I was gonna do it today, but then I realized the sun's probably gonna be out tomorrow, which make it like the ideal picking time. It'd be good to give them all a little another day to grow, but they're everywhere. Um, there's a short video clip. I'll show it in a minute here. Or actually, I'm gonna show it right now. Here it is. So this is what I was talking about with the uh, wood. Let's see this. All over the place. There. Pieces like that. Little tiny mushrooms popping up. All kinds of stuff out here in the forest. Anyway, getting back to what I was talking about. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, mushrooms. So yeah, I want to go back up tomorrow. It's supposed to be sunny tomorrow. I've got to do a town run tomorrow. I've got another supply run. It's the beginning of the month, so I've been getting I've got dog food I've got to pick up and uh, my 50 pack of sardines. <laughs> I'm very excited to get. I need to get some regular saltine crackers to go with them. I've talked about this. I need my saltine crackers and sardines. <laughs> Anywho, um, there's lots of protein and the oils and the fish are really good for you. And it's just, it's just reasons like people give sardines a bad they got a bad rap. Um, they're full of flavor. It's like oh they're so strong. Yeah, it's strong with flavor. Like why are we so like anti-flavor? Been eating bland burgers at McDonald's for far too long. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> British accent popped out again. I don't like he's doing that. I'm not British. I've never even been to London, England. I've known a lot of British people. I like to watch. I like to watch British movies. Um, you know, what's the guy? Is it Guy Ritchie? Is the guy the same that made Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch and a bunch of other ones that I absolutely adore? Absolutely adore, especially Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Definitely a favorite. Followed shortly by Snatch. There was that other one he did with what's his name? The guy from 007. 
Daniel Craig. Okay. I think it was called Cake or something like that. I forget. Anyway. Yada 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 blah blah blah. Um yeah. That's the deal for tomorrow. Is that the boss that is missing? Um Which if you watch the video I'm uploading you'll understand why I had that. <laughs> I had to take the bus. Which fortunately there is one, but it's ugh. It's a whole thing, I talked about it in the video. It's not, it, 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 there's nothing convenient about it. Nothing at all. And coming back at that night, I, I wish I'd been able to video videotape it. I could have, I just didn't have the strength and I was so pissed. <laughs> it was so dark and so cold. And it was like I was walking and trying to ride a bicycle on ice with a huge backpack and all this stuff and I kept wiping out and falling and it cracked landing on my butt a bunch of times and it just, ugh, had a bruise that hurt for days yada yada <laughs> but you know me I can't complain <laughs> you know what grinds my gears no that's not I'm, I'm confusing Family Guy with uh, Rodney Dangerfield or something anyway it doesn't matter um I don't know, it just could go on for days. It's like, it's so funny. It's like, I, I, I hesitate to start taping these all the time. I'm like, what am I going to talk about? I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about. What am I going to say? And then the second I open my mouth, it's like a faucet. And then it just goes, yada, blah, blah, blah. I could get into so many different things because I was listening to the news today. I've been using this app, Simple Radio, that is very cool for people like me because it lets you access radio stations from all over the world um, and especially news stations um, and in case you didn't know some of the best news comes from radio um, it's one of the last best places to get like actual news <laughs> and not this media propaganda they just shovel at us all the time on the major networks and all that I mean Man, don't get used to it. And it's not like I love the Republicans or anything. I have been a Republican hater since before Whoopi Goldberg was fucking a Republican. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But I, I was, you know, I was a full powered, like, Democratic Party um, protesting left wing. Like, I, I was pro socialism. <laughs> There's a video on my YouTube right now about what is socialism, like actual so socialism by this really, you know, kind of smart professor guy. Um, I forget what his name is. I haven't watched it in a while. It's a great video. It really explains what socialism is. Um, and what everybody, what, I don't think there's ever actually been a socialist country. What there's been is fascist countries posing as socialist countries. <laughs> Much like the United States is a fascist country posing as a democracy. I don't know if it was always this way, but it seems for as long as I've been breathing on this planet, it's been that way. Um, to a certain extent, ah, that's another subject I could go on and on for. Because I'm back, you know, again, I, this goes back to that. Though. I used to be like, you know, so many different things. Very anti-government, very anti-corporation, very anti so many. And a lot of that goes back to the way my parents like raised me. And, to believe that money was the root of all evil. <laughs> so naturally my worldview developed from that. Um, don't teach your kids that money is the root of all evil, you will turn them into dumb poor slaves. And if the programming doesn't take, they'll end up like me, crazy living in the woods. <laughs> Do your children a favor, teach them the importance of money, teach them the importance of finance, and how to have your money work for you as opposed to working for money because there's a huge difference and the opportunity is out there for anyone who wants it you just have to have the good sense and parents or someone to nudge you in that direction ever <laughs> uh, or if you're like me you just take a really 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 long 46 year roundabout way of figuring it out on your own <laughs> uh, yeah so I guess I'll, I'll, I'll get into all of it as I do more vlogs where I am politically, where I am on, you know, capitalism and socialism and communism and isms. 
generally I'm um, with with Lenin on that. Isms, in my opinion, are not good. Person shouldn't believe in isms. He should believe in himself. Although really, I don't remember Lenin ever saying that. I just remember Ferris Bueller saying <laughs> Matthew Broderick saying it as the character of Ferris Bueller. But I love I love that movie. Ferris Bueller's Day Off has always been one of my most favorite movies. I need to get a copy. I'd like to watch that right now. It makes me happy. I love being happy. It's like my natural state. And I've been so angry and pissed off and upset for so long. I've lost, I lost myself for a, minute, a while. But we're, we're finding me again. I'm in there still. Hi. How you doing? Everything is fabulous. Oh, I can't be getting there. <laughs> it's a long road. It's not that long. I don't know what it is. I don't know what anything is. That's one of the things that bothers me, is that nobody knows what anything is. Everybody, like, believes a whole bunch of stuff, but as far as I can tell, everybody's operating on second-hand information they got from someone else. And which means it could be, everything could be anything. It's, I'm all right with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not all right with it. I want to know. <laughs> but it can, it's hard to, f I'm not in a position to know things of that nature or something. I need to rise up through the echelons. It's not that I need money, I need influence. Power. I need to know the right people. To get into the right places and see the right libraries and all that stuff. To know what Professor Quigley knew. He was chummy with the people at the round table. Carol Quigley, the guy who wrote the book Tragedy and Hope, A History of the World in Our Time. It's 900 something. I'm telling you. <laughs> 900 something. Just go to the. All you have to do. <laughs> it's very to think of this. Was like, you, you, there's an appendix in the back of the book. You literally go to the back of the book and go to the letter R and sleep and look for the word round table. <laughs> and it will tell you every page that Professor Dr. Dr. Carol Quigley, Professor Dr. or Dr. Professor, I don't know. <laughs> Professor Carol Quigley talks about the round tables that kind of run things, sort of, maybe a little bit. Um, and I used to want to know about these things for the sake of exposing it and stopping it or ending it and freeing mankind, but mankind doesn't want to be free. Fact. I, they don't. They Generally speaking, some of us do. I do. I'm all about it, but most people... And I can kind of understand it now. That, like, they just don't feel competent enough to be <laughs> responsible for themselves or something. I, but I feel like it's not that people can't be. They're just don't taking the time or aren't getting the opportunities to learn what they need to be competent human beings. Capable of actually being free and making decisions for themselves that aren't catastrophic to the rest of us. <laughs> I guess a big part of freedom is understanding that you're not on this planet alone and if you're free so is everybody else and so you know certain understandings do need to be reached but this idea of like set rules and punishing people and it's like why are they going the route of of, of forcing through of enforcement rather than persuasion through education it's like why can't you just educate people not forcibly, but like, it, it, my point is, is that if you, if your form of government or whatever it is, is supposedly beneficial, like truly, truly beneficial, then you should be able to explain it to the people you're planning on governing in such a way that they understand that and of their own free will accept it because what you put forth to them is rational and makes sense and is obviously actually in their best interests. I feel like if you have to enforce it, then then something's wrong, and you're not really out for the benefit of mankind, you know. At least, I don't, I don't know. There's just so much I don't know. It's like, if I could right now, what I'd want more than anything is be able to sit down in a room at a table with a list of names too long to go into right now. Basically, everybody who goes to the Bilderberg groups and stuff like that. <laughs> um, a lot of those people. Uh, and some others. And just have a chat. 
Hi, how you doing? What's going on? What are you doing with the planet? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> I wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even like take notes or record it or anything. I'd sign like non-disclosure agreements up the, up the yang and swear my, my, you know, the, my own death if I ever revealed anything. I just need to know. <laughs> I need to know what's going on. I can't make a competent decision in my own life as a free thinker without understanding the world and what's actually going on in it. It's like, I can't, it's, it's difficult for me. It's been difficult until very recently for me to, to establish some kind of direction in life without it, without that information. And it, it's bothered me extremely that everybody else is so cool with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And with that, I close for the day. See you tomorrow. Toodles.